Oh hi, welcome to Gatsy on Goosebumps, the show in which I review every single Goosebumps book from R.L. Stein's original series. Today we'll be looking at Goosebumps number 26, oh, today we'll be looking at Goosebumps 28, the Cooked Clock of Doom, and we'll be enjoying a beautiful Eagle Hawk Sauvignon Blanc 2017. The cover art, much like the wine, is bold and vibrant. Um, got a strong blue and yellow colour scheme here uh, with the uh, titular cuckoo clock there as the main focus. Don't know how well you can make a cuckoo clock uh, seem scary. I think this is probably the best you can do. Tagline is keep your eye on the birdie, and the blurb reads as follows Don't beat the clock. Tara the Terrible. That's what Michael Webster calls his bratty little sister. She loves getting Michael in trouble, making his life miserable. Things couldn't get any worse. Then Mr. Webster brings home the antique cuckoo clock. It's old, it's expensive, and Mr. Webster won't let anyone touch it. Poor Michael. He should have listened to his dad. Because someone has put a spell on the clock. A strange spell. A dangerous spell. And now Michael's life will never be the same again. Not a great blurb because... It tells you essentially what the name of the book does, that the cook clock is scary but it doesn't give you any insight into why. The first section of the book is essentially there to establish how terrible it is for Michael to live with his sister Tara. And credits where credit where it's due, uh, it is a living hell with that uh, little bitch. Um, like, constantly getting Michael in trouble. And his idiot parents are too oblivious to realise what she's doing. Like, it's called the Cuckoo Clock of Doom, but uh, Michael's little sister is is definitely the uh, the main antagonist of the book. Uh, so his big plan to get even is to turn the head of the Cuckoo Clock around, and then his dad will uh, blame his little sister, and that will make up for years of you know emotional neglect and abuse from his parents. Essentially, turning the head of the bird backwards actually sends time backwards. So. He relives his birthday again and uh, gets embarrassed by Tara again. Um, but then he goes a few days before that. Um, and it, he just keeps going back further in time every time he um, every time he goes to sleep. Eventually going back, I think, to like uh, third grade and then like kindergarten. And then finally, um, you know, he's a baby. And he realises... If this keeps going, the next time I go to sleep, I will just be in utero when I wake up, or not even conceived. So he realises, as his younger self, he's got to actually find the clock that was in the antique store that, from from whence his father bought it, and actually fix the um, the, the the bird so everything will go back to normal. And he almost gets there as like a, a, a kindergartner, I think but the store's closed, you know, he makes his way all downtown by himself and the store's closed. Um, and then as a baby, I think his parents are taking him there and he, in an emotional climax, he, um, he manages to climb up to the cuckoo clock and just in the nick of time, he fixes the bird and everything reverts back to normal. Or so we think. At the very start of the book, um, Michael's dad explains that he gets the clock because the owner noticed a flaw in it. Not really sure what the floor is, um, but then once everything's back to normal, um, they notice that the year Tara was born wasn't there. Somewhere in the process, Michael removed his uh, little sister from existence. And it sort of ends with him saying he might go back and get her sometime and return her to reality, but he's in no rush. And certainly his life seems a lot better without her. So good for him. All's well that ends well. Time travel is fine. Mm. Again, the most compelling aspect of the book is, um, is Michael being forced to deal with his, uh, his little sister, um, who really does go overboard to make his life miserable. Even when um, he goes back to when he's younger and she's younger, she's still exactly the same. Um, so she definitely is the, uh, the, the, the antagonist of this book. And you do definitely sympathise with Michael. You just have to think you could probably find something better to do 
then turn the head of a clock around to get your sister in trouble. But that's the most effective element of the book, is um, making us sympathise with Michael. Which is why it's so satisfying to have a happy ending for the book that has um, you know, him living happily. If Goosebumps books can be divided into both scary or hijinks stories, this is definitely a hijinks one. You know, there's nothing really scary except the thought of being erased from existence. I really appreciate that, um, you know, it's all concise in the timeline. You know, he, he turned the head of the bird around and then he has to find out where the clock was originally to fix it. So it, it you know, even though it involves like going back in time in your own future self, there's no glaring huge paradoxes or problems with the resolution. Overall, not something that's gonna give you chills, but certainly an enjoyable experience. The same goes for the Sauvignon Blanc. It's a very summery wine, um, vibrant, fruity flavour. Uh, best enjoyed probably with friends in an outdoor setting, maybe a barbecue or a picnic or something. Uh, it goes down very easily and a perfect complement to a hot summer's night. Mmm. Sign me up for another one of those. That's all for this week. Please join me next time in which I discuss Goosebumps number 29, Monster Blood 3. As always, thank you for watching, and please drink responsibly. Mm.